All right, let's start this off, y'all. This episode of the Broco Taku Podcast is brought to you by Assault, the board game. Battery not included. Welcome to the Broke Otaku Podcast. I'm your host, AJ. With me is Marcus, a.k.a. Dr. Susu Studio. Mm, 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 mm. Susu Studio. That's how I get it, right? Yo, hey, I'm Phil Collins and Dr. Seuss at the same... I don't know what to do with that shit. Hi, y'all. <laughs> Phil Collins and Dr. Seuss? Why don't you Seuss? try rhyming? Try rhyming. Why don't you try? Have you ever have you have you have you thought about rhyming? Have you tried rhyming? I've never rhymed anything before in my life. Oh, that's right, I forgot. That would you be a, a good rhyme. life goal if, like, <laughs> you're just like I never rhyme. That's my you thing. Got, you got to be the most boring dude in the world. <laughs> <laughs> that's your goal. I can't complete this sentence because it will rhyme. You can't have children, and I don't think you're allowed to have parents either because they would have been reading you some stuff. Right, you'd have to be be an odd kid because kids repeat everything they hear. Rhyming is meet, fundamental. Meet Mister Frank Bean. He's never rhymed a single time in his life, <laughs> and I ain't about to start. <laughs> I'm uh, Frank Bean. I pride and myself. What the hell's? Oh, and, and Alan, uh, aka <laughs> and Alan, super sex slave girl boy. What? I don't know. Marcus sent it to me. Can I remind the, the audience Why? that I don't make these up? Marcus writes the one for Alan, and Alan S- writes the one for Marcus, and I just read them. Okay. The last word of that was girl boy? Yes. Super sex slave girl boy. It's an anime. It's a one manga, word or probably. two. <laughs> it's one hentai. word. Girl boy is one word, not hyphenated. It's hentai. Okay. I don't think we're gonna do impressions this week. No, no we're not. We're not. Moving on. <laughs> Who's the- here? We go. No, hold on. Here, I got something. Here it goes. So, uh, I can have sex with myself if I choose. Ew, that's my choice. I mean, I guess. <laughs> Super sex slave girl boy. Is that an ew? TM. Mattel. By Mattel. That's an ew. I mean, it's an ew to me. I guess if you're the one doing it, it's less disgusting. But here, here's what it is: if you want to do that, that's cool. Just don't tell anybody. Yeah, yeah, and don't your, don't try to make business. people accept you. <laughs> <laughs> don't expect anyone to love you for who you are. Right. If you're doing that, yeah, it's like those people who are like, "I want to reclaim my femininity and make videos about my period." It's like. Look, nobody, yeah, nobody should be shamed about their period, but also don't share that because we don't want to know about it. I mean, they can share it. I, I'm not going to watch it. And I, I don't think, think anybody else should watch it. I think it's much is all I'm saying. You know, Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of much. There's too there's much, too much, much. much. <laughs> a whole lot of much. Let's <laughs> just rename <laughs> Earth a whole lot of much. <laughs> I want to live on much, an asteroid. Much too much. The planet, much too much. Uh, Alan, you're so supposed hey. to run the game today. Oh, snap, I forgot. Oh, boy. Uh, this will be fun. No, I'm just kidding. I did some work. I believed you, so thing. don't do that. <laughs> I was getting ready to get my Marcus notes out had, and be like, all right, Marcus I guess I'm just running had an this. aneurysm. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad enough. It's bad enough for Marcus having to work with. Me and AJ. <laughs> uh, without me <laughs> telling him I forgot to do the thing. I'll Oops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was that me? So you guys you guys have played this before. We've done this before. I've never it's played this It's a great thing before. we're doing. I've only hosted it's called, it. It's called What Do You Think the Anime Should Be About Given the Title and Other Extemporaneous Circumstances. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the a game. title of an anime and then you're going to tell me what it's about. And then I'm going to tell you who wins based on things that don't matter. And then I'm going to read the real synopsis and we're all going to have some laughs. It's something for everyone. If you like goofs, boom, we got that. If you like more goofs, 
boom, satisfied. If you like hearing about random anime from like the mid to bottom ranks of my anime list, this is for you. Maybe you'll find something that intrigues you. Whoop, whoop. Bring it. Whoop, whoopity, whoopity. All right, who is going first? Marcus is going first. Oh. I've decided. Okay. All right, the first one is called... Yeah, that's a horrible one to use. Uh, I'm going to use this one. Uh, <clears throat> hopefully you haven't heard of this. This is the risk I run with running this guy, this game for you guys. Is I haven't heard of anything, and you guys have heard of everything. So, Marcus, tell me what Stainless Night is about. Congratulations. I've never heard of that. Yes. Is that Stainless Night as in, like, the Knights of the Round Table or the Knight... No, no K, no K. Okay. Fuck. You shouldn't have actually Knights. asked that question. I shouldn't question. have asked that question. I should have. Because I was definitely going to go for Knights with a K. All right. Oh, God. Mm. That just changes entirely how I think about this. <laughs> um, Stainless Knights is about a group of girls that are in middle school that are part of a club that's really a secret. It's one of those like clubs where they all make a, a pact of some sort. Um, so it's not really healthy and the parents and the teachers don't know about it. And uh, basically the pact is whenever you go on some public transportation, you have to find a seat that doesn't have stains on it. And then when you sit on it, you have to chant the magic words. And then the witch, boy Skeba, comes out. <laughs> the witch boy Skeba? And she'll, she'll grant witch. you your favorite wish. But the wish is always like a monkey's paw thing where it comes true, but in the way that you don't want it to. <laughs> okay. Uh points for world building with the witch boy Sheba. Uh AJ, what what say you? Stainless Night, what's it what's it about? Stainless Night is about a a night cleanup crew at a school that uh when they start working, uh uh mud monsters and garbage monsters uh attack the school and they have to fight off the the garbage monsters and keep the school clean and and have it cleaned up by the time the kids start so the whole the whole series is new monsters and they get closer and closer to the school starting before they've cleaned up so their whole goal is just keeping the school clean you could also replace school with any public building Hospital, no, it's church. Anime. It has to be a school, uh, library, synagogue. God damn it, that's really good. <laughs> synagogue. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I want to watch that show. I want to see brick janitors like doing crazy bow skill stuff with mops. That'd be fun. Hell yeah! Action anime involving cleaning. Yeah, sign me up. We did watch something that had that basic premise that could have been awesome, but it wasn't. Do you remember? Both of I, you saw I it. I watched that. Uh, it was cleaning? about cleaning awesomely, but then it was like about a bunch of other dumb shit too. Oh, the only thing I can think about cleaning dentist? is that, what was that game uh, where you were like sweeping <clears throat> dirt and paper and stuff and dust Shores? oh dust dust, dust force. force i was gonna talk i was gonna bring that up dust force yeah but i didn't yeah i don't know what you're talking about marcus uh, <clears throat> you came out of the dragon's teeth didn't you oh i, I said i said dragon's dentist i said oh that. i didn't oh, hear you, you. Did. i didn't hear you yeah either. speak up yeah there was other stuff happening i was too busy talking about dust uh, force so obviously aj won <laughs> because <laughs> that should be a show and isn't so somebody get on that uh how do points work? It doesn't matter. It doesn't Here's matter. what it's actually about. After 10 years of dormancy, Linnea wakes up or Linnea wakes from a capsule in the countryside of Japan. 
Without any memories, she wanders into a small research center staffed by three beautiful women. One of the researchers, Sayako, is entranced by the strange woman and leaves her present lover. Sayako takes Linnea to bed and finds that her abilities are beyond that of any ordinary woman. Whoa, that took a turn. I learned a lot uh, prepping this game. I learned what Eshi is. Eshi, yep. <laughs> Eshi and uh, something else that I can't remember now because it's been... See, I was going to go the gross route and I <clears throat> didn't, but I should have because I would have been closer. You should have because stainless... You know what they I was mean. just you I was just trying about. to like wean into this thing because I'm usually saying something crazy and making y'all cringe. <laughs> so I was gonna be nice tonight. Usually but, by the last round, we're we're hitting some weird. Some well, AJ weird had notes. the advantage of going going second, so he got to like think about it. True. Yes. So what I should do is send it to you, uh, separately or something. Ah, oh, that's too much work. Nah, it's better this way. What's the next one? The next one. Uh, so AJ is going to go first is called bang dream. I've heard of this, but I have no idea what it's about. Okay. So, good. um, bang dream is about, um, a guy who is obsessed with guns. And when mm. he goes to sleep, he has, wet dreams about the guns because they look like women. <laughs> so it's a double entendre with the word bang. Okay. When he's awake, it means guns. When he's asleep, it means women. And each episode sure. is just a new gun and a new woman. And that's it. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. AJ's better at this game than <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I, I just want to kind of just concede defeat. Cause, nope. Cause I, I suck at making things after that. Up. After that riveting, yeah, uh, yarn that he spun. Yeah, Bang Dream is about a little boy who oh God <laughs> is wholesome and has never had a boner, but that's not what the story's about. That's just <laughs> true of his character um okay <laughs> it's just a side about, fact they just happened to mention it in like episode six it's about his dream his dreams he, he lives in a, a world that we relate to that's contemporary to ours and uh but in his dreams he lives in this dystopian um like world that's like this big giant like it's all indoors like there's no outdoors and structures are like super big and there's like big deep pits that you can fall into. And he has this really special gun that can shoot through anything. And his whole goal is to find this dude whose name is Kitty and kill him because he's boring. And he's always saying blam, but he his gun says bang. And then he wakes up and then he has to live his normal life. But when he's in his dream, he has to go find Kiri and try to kill him. Bang dream. It's a crossover okay. with blame. It's a crossover with blame. Yes. <laughs> blame. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, cool. I think how to, how to decide. Um, <laughs> let's see who's closer to the actual, uh, synopsis. When Kasumi Toyama was out camping as a child, she heard the rhythm of the star beat. That's an air quote star beat. While, ad <laughs> while admiring the starry night sky, this sparkling, heart-pounding sound left a lasting impression on her, and since then, she has constantly been seeking to rediscover that exciting thrill. Now, as a newly enrolled student of Hana Sakagawa High School for Girls, Kasumi is more determined than ever to find that long-lost sensation again. She attempts a myriad of school club activities and even considers taking up a part-time job, but none of these feel suitable for her. That is, until she chances upon a star-shaped guitar in the storage room of an old pawn shop. It leads her to a live house where she is captivated by watching a live performance for the first time. I don't know what a live house is, but maybe that's a thing. Spurred from the adrenaline, she instantly decides to form a band without even really knowing why. However, such a venture requires her to confront various hurdles with new friends she makes along the way, all in her pursuit to encounter that twinkling, heart-throbbing ardor once more. Ardor? 
ardor. Ardor. It's like passionate strong feelings. fervor. Oh. <clears throat> yeah. Every day's a school day, as they say. T I L. Uh I'm gonna give it to Marcus just so we can have a tie <laughs> and then have a tiebreaker. <laughs> That's what we call pity points, folks. Fair enough. No, I mean I, I don't know. Something about AJ's was just it had no substance. It didn't have a. Uh, it didn't have heart. Marcus, yours had heart. It no, didn't have it, heart. AJ's. No, it didn't. Mine was a premise. <laughs> Marcus was a story. I like that. In 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 the daytime, when you're awake, it's guns, and when you're asleep, it's women. That's dope. Not really though. But it is though. <laughs> I got confused. I was like, are the guns? Do the guns look like women? Are they women-shaped guns? I have a lot of questions. <laughs> yep. A lot of questions about Yeah, them. You still will. And guess how you have to shoot them? <laughs> what? Nothing. No. What's the next one? Why did you say that? Uh, tell me if you've heard of this one. Uh, AJ, you'll go for... No. Marcus, Marcus will go first. first. Uh, this one's called Z slash X colon ignition. No. Yeah, I haven't heard of that. Awesome. Is it the word colon or the symbol colon? It's the symbol colon, like someone misspelling cologne. Z slash X ignition. Yep. Okay. With a colon in between the X okay. and the ignition. <laughs> <laughs> ah, sorry. Um, Bless you. Uh, this is about a world that is a gas giant world. So there is no ground to live upon. So everybody lives in the sky. And nobody knows how humanity got there. It's a big old mystery. Um, but everybody lives in the sky like on these big like contraptions that like float. They just float. They don't have propellers or anything like that to keep them float. Nobody knows why. But the people have been able to build like planes and like carrier airships and stuff like that. So they're fighting. They're not always having war. And the one country is losing real bad because they suck and everybody there is ugly. And then the one, the one kid that some, sometimes people beat him up, um, they threw him down a, a a thing in one of the structures, and he found a. a <laughs> <laughs> they threw him down a thing in one of the structures. <laughs> I'm sorry, continue. Shut up, shut up. And where he found like a, a a jewel, and he like brings it up to the old scientist guy. That's his only friend, because his parents hate him too. And the guy's like, "Oh, that's <laughs> that's the famed Scrobulus. And he's like, "What?" <laughs> The and then an attack happens and he's like go and the kids like doesn't know what to do so he just runs out <clears throat> and then he trips and then he falls off the edge of the thing and like he's about to die when the battle's happening but then up from beneath him there's like this machine that flies up out of the clouds below and then forms around him and he's the ZX ignition mech guy and he saves the whole world <laughs> Except <laughs> since everybody hated him so much, he blows up everybody from his home sh home platform thing except the doctor. Yeah. And then they go and try to figure out like the mysteries of the world while fighting wars for no reason. Is the home platform thing similar to the thing in the structure <laughs> place? No, because... <laughs> Not at all, you fool. This is in the sky. And you can You're go right. outside. You can go outside. In that other world, you couldn't go outside. There was no outside. And there were no stairs to be thrown down. <laughs> <laughs> they throw him down. I'm like, stairs, of course. What else do you get thrown down? <laughs> the thing and the structure. <laughs> All right, I like it. AJ, what, <laughs> how do you top that? <clears throat> go ahead and follow that. Okay. Hold on. I will. Thank you, Alex. All right. <clears throat> Z is a rambunctious racer, and his little brother X <laughs> is his only competition. The only thing is, they both want to be the best racer in the world. 
how will they overcome their issues of brotherly love while also competing for the gold? Find out in <laughs> ZX Ignition, only on Fox Kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, so obviously this show is from 1992. Yes, <clears throat> I that that sent me. I've been sent. Now I gotta get. Yeah, right. find out. Yeah, How, Google since that when are bro- ignition commercial? Since when is brotherly love an issue to overcome? <laughs> 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 that would be so anime, though, if they were like, "I don't want to beat you because you're my brother and I love you," but they, yeah, but exactly. I want to be the best. <laughs> they think like an it's anime. a conflict. <laughs> The, and Conflict, the, yeah. the villain takes the mom hostage. It's like, one of you better win. <laughs> <laughs> one of you needs to win, but only one can win. I'm just glad they get along. They used to fight all the time. Shut up, mom. Okay, uh, so <laughs> it's close, but I'm going to give it to Marcus because his was closer to the actual thing that it's actually about. Oh, what? No shit. way. Oh, shit. Mine was off impossible yours was you thought (laughs) (laughs) i can't tell if you're being sarcastic uh here's what it's about the story is set in the not so distant future five quote black points unquote suddenly appear around the world as portals to parallel worlds immediately after strange creatures began their invasion from these portals these creatures are the inhabitants of five worlds, the same worlds in different time frames. In order to ensure their own future time frame survives, each of the five invasion forces battle to wipe the other future time frames out. The key is one card-shaped device. <laughs> is it what? called the, Why is that the is key? It ca- is it called the scrobulus? I think so. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, here it says the key card-shaped card key device. Is called the Scrobulus. <laughs> They're not brothers racing at all. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard of such a thing. I know. I know it's really hard to believe, but I mean, it's got the word ignition or whatever. The word ignition is in the title, but it doesn't sound like it's about because the key racing. card shaped key card like is the ignition for what yeah. it. You to win, duh, for the universe. <laughs> the, the ignition yeah. for the story. Drives the story forward. The remix to ign- ignition. Re- this is a remix. Reignition. Reignition. Is that all we got from this game? <laughs> uh, I mean, I got a couple more. If you want to keep going, we haven't let's- been going that long. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do at least one more. See how long this one goes. I want to talk about Lupin. <clears throat> Yeah, me too. Rupin. So why are we, why are we playing more games if we want to talk about? Never mind. This one. <laughs> one more. Let's do one more. For, one more. All right, AJ. You guys have probably heard of this because it has a snappy title. It's called Orange. Uh, I have heard of it. I've not. All right. Um, I'm bad at this. I game. don't know entirely no, what no, it's the about. F- the first three we didn't know. Um, I know that it involves. High school right. kids. It's basically. Hey, shut up real quick, AJ. What's the other one? What's the other one? You said you had two, right? Yeah, I said that, but I also like. Ooh, here's a good one. Here's one. <laughs> ah, never mind. <laughs> this is a great radio. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, here's no. This is a. This is better because it's completely ridiculous, and you guys. We'll just say whatever crazy shit you think of. This one is called Utaware Rumono wow. Futari no Hakuoro. I think What's I, that one about? Um, yeah, <laughs> you know this. I know, I've, I've heard pants. of it. I, what are you talking about? I think about? it's about uh, girls who fight in the army. And they, I don't know the story exactly, but we'll just, I'll just flesh it out from there. Girls fight. Fighting in the army uh, against the evil Fourth Reich, because the Third Reich is gone. So they got a fourth one now. And so <laughs> Marcus is shaking his head. That's how, that's how it works. And they're like, we can't have that. So these girls are genetically <laughs> engineered, because you have to have little girls fight, because like grown men, they can't get it done. 
So the little girls no. have to do it, and they drive tanks, and they're trained for tanks, and they're trained for combat, specialized combat. And you don't see them coming because they're small. And uh, <laughs> their tanks are also small. But one girl's like, wait a minute, I don't want to fight. And she's like trying to get her, her other army girls involved and say, like, we don't have to fight. We got to fight back to fight for freedom and so forth. That's it. Okay. Marcus. Uta ware rumono futari no hakuoro. This is about a group of girls who fight in tanks and they're trained <laughs> to fight in a war, but one of them doesn't want to. No, I'm not going to do that. What's happening? Um, this is about this is about mm. a group of girls who are pop star sensations across the world, and the world is at war, but they're like, we can stop it with singing, and so they like write songs and every time there's a conflict they like get parachuted down into a war zone and every episode is a music video of them singing and getting people in different countries to lay down their arms and it's happy and pretty with big eyes and moe characters and stands and everything else yeah this cool i want to watch that this is a a video <clears throat> game too it's one of those visual novel video games so was aj right is that what it is no i was way off i looked it up sorry go ahead alan <laughs> what cheater <laughs> what is it really then i cheated and also um... i didn't che- i just looked it up while marcus was talking Nah, i'm just kidding i'm just kidding uh after the events of mask of deception which i guess we're all supposed to know what that is The Yamato Empire is now ruled with an iron fist by a ruthless usurper who seeks to subjugate all before him. It's up to a couple of familiar faces, again, I I have nothing, to band together against the might of the Imperial Army. And the fate of the world hangs in the balance as nations and generals must pick a side to fight with in this perilous civil war. Secrets will be revealed, friendships will be tested, and battles will be fought. Will peace and order be restored, or will the victory at any cost be the beginning of the end? You switched accents like halfway through the <laughs> synopsis. I'm just, I'm just, so I was just I was closer because I had the fourth Reich, <clears throat> which is basically the Can evil empire. Anything about the fourth Reich? No, but course. he talked about an evil <laughs> imperial <laughs> army or something. I mean, mine, con- you don't know who they're fighting. I didn't say. <laughs> there's, there's just war. I I did like Marcus's better. That's uh, fine. The whole music can end wars, even though it can't. Um, <laughs> it but... really can't. <laughs> <laughs> even though it really and truly cannot. Uh, but I'm going to give it to AJ because uh, he was closer i guess sort of sometimes Boom. there was battles there was evil all right let's do the let's do the uh let's see how your short-term memory works mm, not very well so this is a prequel called utaware rumono itsuwari no kamen something shadow mask uh how do you know because you said it because oh you took us okay <laughs> Why is that what common mm. re- means from common writer? No, he literally said when he was reading Mask. the synopsis for the last one Mask of Deception. Mask of Deception. Oh, that's what it was. Your so memory is better no than common, mine. Maybe. I forgot everything. That's that's why I said short term memory. Yeah, my memory sucks, bro. S- start taking that ginkgo jojoba supplement. I need whatever. to. Does that work for real? <laughs> this pro the Virgo Taku podcast is not brought to you by Ginkgo Bologna. I almost, I almost closed the deal there. It's like, does it really work? I was literally gonna go <laughs> and just buy some and try it out. I mean, I think maybe it's supposed to do what I said it does, but you gotta buy it to find out. Click this affiliate link. <laughs> Those things. I don't know. I took some uh, Rosea, Rosa something for a while, and that was not, that was weird. 
Sometimes I'd feel good, but then I couldn't sleep at night. It was odd. Anyway. I hear speed works. Brainwave. Speed. <laughs> I'm a fan of cocaine personally, but <laughs> for my I just smoke weed. That's how I get my something. <laughs> Who's going first? Is it when me? you need a big dose of something, smoke some weed. <laughs> Grab that weed. Mar- Grab a weed. <laughs> Marcus, it's your turn to go first. Is it all right? Who kind of you know kimono is about <laughs> the world before? <laughs> Hikari the, no Kimono. The Great Mask Deception. <laughs> when war wasn't a thing on the menu. <laughs> and this everybody is- ate <laughs> steak that was made from vegetable byproducts because the world was vegan and everyone was happy until the mask fell out of the sky and caused the First impact and Ava unit <laughs> negative one came up out of the earth and caused the first extinction event that was lost to history. <laughs> How are you telling about it? That's what it's about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I like it. That's good. <laughs> Mask of Deception. Yuto ware no mono kono funa la da 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 da. Kono kono funimation. <laughs> Is about a, a guy who finds the mask of density, not destiny, uh, and he puts it on and it Word. <laughs> it, it turns him into a giant and the, they, all the <laughs> corporations and governments of the world want it. Cause they want to be big, so <laughs> they they fight wars to try to get this the mask of density. That's it. That's it. Ooh. I just imagine a CEO. <laughs> like, we're we're oh, gonna shit. get so big that mask that mask turns you into a giant. We gotta get that shit. <laughs> Cause I want to be big. God damn it. <laughs> Stop all work that's making us muddy. I gotta need, get this I t- mask. I told corporate I'm gonna be big. <laughs> I n- I need substantial growth this quarter. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in the red for uh, too long. Yeah, to you really do have to go like four or five rounds in this game t- <laughs> before the juices start flowing <laughs> and the, the stream of conscious starts to materialize. <laughs> Uh, okay, so it doesn't mean mask of deception. It means the false faces. Oh man! Although I, mean, that's I think close. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, it's the same same idea. Um, waking up cold and alone in the woods, a nameless man is surrounded by unfamiliar scenes. Without any memories, he's utterly lost until he stumbles upon Kuan, a girl, a young girl with animal ears and a tail. She saves him leading him back to her town while protecting them both from Borogigiri, giant centipede-like creatures, and a mysterious red slime. After they arrive, she names him Haku after a prominent historical figure from the area. He quickly realizes he is one of a kind, the only one without animal ears and a tail. The journey to the capital of Yamato, the country in which Kuan lives, me- oh, the two journey, sorry. Uh, meeting more people and making new friends, all the while unknowingly delving deeper into the politics and inner conflicts of Yamato. How are those two related? The one you did well, before this and the one you well, did you, <clears throat> this, this is a prequel, is, so stuff was unfamiliar, and then in the, the sequel, stuff's familiar. <laughs> okay. I just That's how it works. That's how it works. Well, I get that. I guess I don't know. This this the synopsis has sounded completely different, <laughs> like totally unrelated. Synop- synopses. The, synopses. The, the the prequel is about one man's journey. The sequel is about the world's journey. Synopsis. All the world is a journey. Uh, I think I'm gonna give it to Marcus. <laughs> he earned it. 
What did I, I forget even say? Your last one already, Evie. Or, I called you Evie. I say my kid's name. <laughs> That's much. not your kid. Uh, it's your uh, brother. AJ. I know he's your kid brother, but that doesn't make him your kid. Good, yeah, good, I just good. like, I just end every sentence with one of my kid's names. <laughs> God Someone's damn telling it, them to Evie. do things. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Henry. <laughs> blank, blank, blank. Oh, now everyone knows my kids' names. I want to bleep those out. Bleep, bleep. Uh, <clears throat> beep, beep, bop, bop. Well, that was the game. I hope that you liked it. And if you did not, fuck yourself. I won. Skibbity, beep, 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 beep. Boo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo. Have you ever won anything so prestigious? Good no. job. This is the highlight of my life. This is my grandest achievement. Nothing can eclipse this, overshadow this, or surpass it not except me lupon did it hi guys i'm lupon and i joined the brokotaku podcast he does that's not what he sounded like (laughs) well in the dubs he does but you wouldn't yeah lupon the third the first um so where is what we watched let's uh let's do this all proper like uh we are we watched lupon the third i almost said lupon the first the third lupon the third third it's an easy mistake the first and if we're just we're gonna spoil it for the second time spoiling it we're gonna spoil it so it's about to get spoiled like that milk you watch the movie uh then don't listen to the podcast go watch the movie and then listen to the rest of the podcast over spoiled milk uh i'm gonna ask you guys a question okay what was your exposure to the lupon the third series prior to watching this movie marcus not much. Um, <clears throat> I remember I first was introduced to it on Adult Swim, which I imagine like a lot of people our age were. Um, and it wasn't a show that I followed. It was just one like, you know, after whatever I was watching, whether it'd be like Cowboy Bebop <clears throat> or like Pilot Candidate or whatever, like that would come on next. I actually and, forgot it was on Adult Swim. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't remember how long it was on there, but that's that's how I knew about it first. Um. And it was this quirky show, like super old, fun enough to watch like while going to sleep, but I never really followed it. And then other than that, um, I bought the woman called Fujiko Mine because I saw like a trailer of it. And I was like, man, the animation looks really cool in that. Um, And it's basically a more adult, a very adult take Mm -hmm. on Lupin. And it just centered around her character. And, um, I liked it. It was just like too gratuitously. Adult it was too for me. much. Yeah. I watched like, it I'm not a too, big, but... I'm not, I'm not in the hentai and I'm not huge on itchy. So I was just like, man, I'm sitting here. My wife definitely don't want to watch this. So anytime right. I'm watching it, it's like alone at night. And I'm like, <laughs> with the windows the shut and the lights it. off. Yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> this the pants off. I'm just like, this chick's tits are out <laughs> every episode, every like, episode. It's part every... of the intro. It's part of the intro. It's part of the intro. And it's like, if it was just part of the intro, I'd be like, all right, that's fine, whatever. But like, after a while, it's just like, all right, man. Like, two like two or three episodes, fine. I can deal with that. Every right. single episode, I'm just starting to feel like a creeper. This isn't my bag. If that is your bag, no judgment, mostly. But not my thing. <laughs> uh, I Yeah, I wanted to so, like that show, but like, it, same thing. Like, it was just too much. I'm like, I... There's no yeah. situation where this is something that I can enjoy <laughs> without feeling either some level of guilt or panic if somebody walks in the room while I'm watching it. Yeah, and I, I mean, if I imagine if it was a movie, I'd be fine. Like, all right, two hours of this, whatever, I can do it. But right. it's just, it's a whole series of it. And I probably got halfway through, and it sucks because the animation is great. Like the art direction, the whole thing's great. The music's great. Cause Lupin just has good music already. 
and um, like the animation style was really cool. And I love the fact that it was a more serious adult take on the th- whole thing. Um, but yeah, that's really my experience. I want to watch the movie that they did concentrating on Goemon. Um, I forget exactly what it's called, but that one has like really sick animation. And that one's really adult too. That one's adult because it's like super gory. Is that blood, like, Goemon's Blood Spray? Is that what it's yeah, called? Yeah, that one. That one. Yeah, I want to watch that. I haven't. That. I haven't haven't ever watched it, but um, if I were to do another Lupin after this, it would be that movie. Alan? Uh, my history uh, with Lupin the Third is much less inter- interesting. Uh, I think I had seen a commercial. Like, I knew what it was. That was about it. And I was like, ah, his face is weird. I kind of want to punch his face. But <laughs> now now I love his face. Um, So... Any to say any more would be me talking about the movie we watched. So <laughs> I'll just wait. So I had watched Castle of Cagliostro, which is uh, <clears throat> that's the one that um, Miyazaki was involved in, um, and that was good. That I think that might still be on Netflix, and I recommend it yeah. if you want more more Lupin. I will. Um, yeah, and... it's on there. Uh, Faith and I saw it. Yeah. Check it out. And then Fujiko, the, that series, we talked enough about that. Not for me. Um, I haven't checked out the TV series or I have one of the moody movies, Lady Liberty something, um, and I, but I haven't watched it yet. Uh, but I, I just love the premise. Like the fact that it's like a goofy James Bond, basically, like set in, in France, mostly with like Super 70s style. Uh, like the whole thing just jives with me really well. So I'm definitely going to start watching more Lupin stuff because this movie is really good. And I liked it a lot. All right. We each have to pick a pronunciation. I'm going to say Lupin cause I'm a wannabe Frenchy. Cause that's, a, cause that's how you say it apparently. Cause that's the actual uh, pronunciation. Mr. And Mr. I took French in high school, always correcting yeah. us. Like, it's yeah, Lupin. I did Lupin. I did and I think, all right. So Mar- AJ said Lupin, Lupin. And Marcus, you have to say Lupin. Cause that's all that's left. No, that uh, Lup- Lupin. 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 Oh, okay. That's Fine. how we all say it over here. We say Lupin. <laughs> But yeah, AJ could say Lupin. I'll say Lupin. Whatever, I don't care. His name Lupin. I'll call Rupin the Furf. <laughs> Ru- I say that Rupin. Lupin. <laughs> Lupin. So, so AJ liked it. Alan, what did you think? The movie Man. that we watched. Yeah, I... unless AJ, you were gonna ask a question. Did I cut you off? Nope. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed the movie. I was really impressed, uh, on lots of levels, like the animation. I was, yeah, I'm kind of floor. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to say about the animation. Like, it's amazing. Like you, you think of like Pixar and, you know, stuff like that being top tier, being like, you know, the, the big boys in, in computer animation like this was just as good if not better than you know anything they've ever done uh yeah i thought the writing was good like their faces are really expressive um like i didn't even know these characters but like they're all i don't know i they're all really likable and uh like it was just it was just a fun movie like i came in with kind of no expectations which is a good way to go into movies i think um yeah and i was i was pleasantly surprised by the whole thing it got it still has like some anime like flavor though where like oh all of a sudden there's like a giant space alien magic machine (laughs) that like you know throws a big fireball that devours a whole country or whatever um and then hitler's in there too so like it scratches all the itches (laughs) <laughs> it's got it's got the Hitler itch. It's got scratched. Hitler. It's got big explosions. <laughs> um, yeah, you got to scratch that Hitler itch. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with the animation. Like it's it's on par with Pixar, Disney Animation Studio. Like everything looks great, and the fact that they were able to take these two D characters and and put them in three D 
like a lot of times that's like hit or miss like sometimes they look kind of janky i think in the last decade that's gotten better but um you know converting a, a character from 2d to 3d it, it's kind of a risky move unless you have the right people working on it and i think they nailed it with all the characters in this movie and it looks really good yeah if nothing else just watch it for the animation yeah it is a beautiful beautiful movie just beautiful marcus um yeah i'll I'll agree with you the the animation was something that i definitely um i mean you can't not notice it right like the v the the medium is visual primarily Mm -hmm. um so you look at the quality of it and it's great and we're actually watching it with another friend will he came in late and um he was like is this an anime? Like this, this looks like a Pixar movie. And <laughs> is this we're just, even? We we're just like, yeah. I mean, pretty much this is like Pix. It it didn't actually happen, but it's like, what if Pixar decided to do an adaptation of a Japanese movie? That's what this looked like. But even even better than that is that the whole thing had this film quality to it. It didn't look too polished. It had like this grit that I really loved. That that made me feel like I was watching a movie in a theater again. Um, so I thought that was cool because I always appreciate that. Everything like like there's a time and place for things to be super clean and glossy and stuff like that. But every once in a while, I like just miss like how the old stuff felt. So it was cool that this felt like that. Um, and there's a lot of other things to like about it, too. Like the music's fucking great. Like, yeah, I love the music, like the theme. They just like the themes already catchy and they just blew it out for the movie. So that was awesome. Overall, though, I have to say that I nothing it really. Um, The story wasn't terribly interesting to me. And there are parts of it where I was like bored, just kind of going like, "Mm, okay, I wonder how long this is. And I wasn't like I wasn't like bored in the way that made me angry, you know, like some other stuff we've talked about on the podcast that I won't get into. (laughs) Um, But I was just, I was just kind of like, okay, we're just going. I wasn't really compelled or riveted that much, even though like the characters themselves were likable enough. Um, But there were just certain situations where I'm like, this is supposed to be a tense scene and I'm not really feeling it for whatever reason. And then like, I thought the whole story, itself is kind of cliche and goofy in parts like like hitler's still alive <laughs> like where we all just started dying when hitler came into play like he's alive he's been hiding in south america all the all the uh the um conspiracy theories are true and stuff like that but um but yeah i didn't hate it it was just kind of like okay we watched that it was, it was the biggest movie. thing is is nice. the predictability like it's highly predictable i i don't think there's anyone who didn't catch that her name unlocked the book um in the early even my i watched it with my my kids um my daughter she's 10 and she guessed it like the second she was like oh duh her name unlocks the book oh yeah okay <laughs> yeah she especially that when, before i did but yeah it was pretty obvious. yeah especially <laughs> when yeah you see the letters pop up where it's like the password is these eight letters and it's like hmm yeah. and and what makes it worse is we were watching it subbed. So when they said her name, Letitia, like we've right, seen that name like out. five times. Right. So it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Those, those letters are her name. That's the thing that's going to happen. Right. Which I should mention Leticia. for the people listening, we did watch it subbed. Uh, the dub cast and the dubbing is really good, but sadly we watched it on YouTube and the, the, the dubs are, slightly out of sync enough that it's distracting it's it's not quite a second but it's close enough to a second that it's just like no (laughs) so uh don't buy it on youtube i don't know if it's like that on every platform but really what you should if you want to get this movie get the uh collector's edition steelbook from best buyer target or amazon because that box Mm -hmm. art have you guys seen that it's, yeah, y'all just, yeah. You showed it to us. It you looks, showed it to yeah, us. It looks really good. It's amazing. I might buy that just to have that on my shelf and have a hard copy of that movie. 
it would, I, yeah, it's a nice thing. It's a nice looking thing to have. Yeah, I'm gonna make a staff, like and you can put the steel case on the top of the staff. And just like <laughs> have it on a staff, just and it'll look awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll take your word for that. But I, it, I uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, but the movie is it's it's fun. I I like the the story. The, the key moments that I like, you know, the scene where he's like he cuts the butt bus in half to free Lupin. Um, what was it? Goemon cuts the bus in half. That was fun. Any scene with Fujiko in it is just good because her character model just looks like super awesome. And like all the all the characters have like the '70s style, the style from the show, but it still looks like really good. Like I don't know what it is. Like Fujiko's kind of got a mullet sort of thing, kind of. I don't know. She's got like a very '70s hairstyle, but like her character model just looks amazing. I don't know. It's awesome. I can't really AJ it. just likes hot 3D chicks. We're finding out. She is a hot 3D chick, too. So that doesn't hurt. Um, <laughs> just trying to make it sound like that's not the reason, but it's, <laughs> no, that's totally it. I'm just saying I can't explain why. It just it's a good looking model. I can't explain it. The explanation is boobies, <laughs> titties, yeah, that's part of it. Uh, uh, and the other. Sorry, I'm cutting you off because I want to go through my favorite moments no go through go ahead the plane scene where he jumps out and then fujiko catches him and then they get chased down and he like tries to dive into the car and then they just completely like steer out of the way and he and he uh he goes like head first into the sand that was really funny to me i don't know why it is something about that moment do you guys remember that moment yeah i remember yeah it i don't know yep. something about it just the timing was hilarious it was Looney Tunes humor. It was, but I don't know. And I, I mean, don't say that disparagingly. Like, I, I just, that's exactly what it is. It's that sort of slapstick, like, bait and switch thing. Like, Bugs Bunny would do shit like that all the time. But it was the right time because the movie's got some serious bits, but it's got enough goofy bits to kind of, you know, it's got that, uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about shit this is terrible podcasting <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about you have to um, you're, you're in the process of explaining yourself je ne sais quoi sure i don't know what that means but yeah that's what i'm that's what i'm going for it's it doesn't french for Frenchy. i don't know what okay is it literally uh yeah je ne sais is i don't know and quoi is what oh i thought that was just a joke in austin powers when dr evil said that no no, that's, that's funny. A, them, right. Them's real words. Okay. Now the joke's even funnier. Anyway, the comedic timing on that movie is it's good in some parts. Uh, the last favorite scene is where he's doing the laser tunnel thing. That because that was just awesome. So he just like he has this uh, loop on the character has you know enough James Bond and enough goofy not James Bond to make him like just fun to watch. Well, for the people that aren't familiar with Lupin, you're comparing it to James Bond a lot, which I'm not going to correct you, but no, correct me, please. Lupin is a thief. Like he's not a spy. He's an international world renowned thief. Okay. I just, I just want to make sure, cause we haven't explained the plot. So if anybody's listening to this, that hasn't, isn't familiar with Lupin for whatever reason, and they decided to continue listening. I just want them to understand that he's a thief. Famous, famous like thief steals jewels and art and works with all these other people to steal things a lot. So to me, I'm just saying like my, James Bond isn't the first thing that comes into mind, even though he's kind of analogous with the James Bond era with the type of music um, that's happening. And there's the intrigue and like we're cool, but we're kind of devious, too, and even though we're also classy. Yeah, it's thing. probably not a fair comparison, and I'm I'm sure there's a lot of Lupin fans who are like, "Don't do that. Don't compare them." <laughs> um, <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> because there's a lot of things about Lupin that are more interesting <clears throat> than James Bond, like the fact that he's got people like Jigen and Goemon and Zenigawa always, you know, around him, um, and James Bond's just him and some random chick each movie. I mean, there's no. I mean, I guess you got like money penny and m and all those but these lupon characters are much more interesting and entertaining um but yeah i mean it, it is a lot of the era it's a lot of the music it's a lot of the kind of set pieces 
um, like these grand set pieces set in different parts of the world, and you're moving through all those different set pieces really fairly quickly, um, and then you know a bit of puzzle solving and all that stuff. So that's the that's the real comparison. Not necessarily that he's a thief and a, he's not a spy, even though they have the same skill set basically. But uh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong about that. So, so yeah. One thing that was interesting was uh, Will was like, when we were watching it, he was like, this feels like Indiana Jones. Actually, did he say that or did one of y'all say that? He did say it felt like Indiana Jones. Yeah, he's right. He is right. Um, When they're in the, especially when they're in that little temple thing, it does, it does kind of feel more like an Indiana Jones movie, even like throughout the whole thing. Um, yeah, I think yeah, it's anytime, like a magical artifact and, you know, Nazis and Yeah, anytime you have a magical art ancient, especially it has to be ancient <laughs> artifact in the fucking desert, it's like, okay, <laughs> it's Indiana Jones now. Well, Nutisha was an archaeologist like Indiana Jones, so it There you go. Kind of makes it was sense. What's her dream? It, yeah, it uh it, it lends with itself well to a, an Indiana Jones comparison. Um, but anyway, the, yeah. So was there, what are the, I kind of named off some of the key moments that I like best. Is there anything you guys want to throw out there before I go to where I think it kind of falters? I'm trying to think. Uh, I liked the laser trap part as well. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I can't think of anything specific. That so it? long ago, so long ago when we watched it, it's been like ten days. It was like ten days. I rewatched part of it before we started. Man, Just you gotta to... encapsulate it in your memory, bruh. Nah, I don't do that no more. <laughs> you need to start taking that ginkgo biloba plus <laughs> the Does version that, work? that works. The plus does. You've been using that regular shit. Ah, uh, I forgot you gotta the plus. Yeah, get the plus. I forgot. The, should I get the silver or gold version? Oh, I don't know. What would Frieza do? <laughs> uh, he would get whatever makes him look taller. Gold. He's golden, Frieza. Come oh, on. man. I'm, man, my Dragon Ball game is weak, but it's yeah. about to get stronger. Uh, hint, hint. Hint, hint, wink, 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 nudge, nudge, foreshadowing. Uh, but AJ, I don't have anything as far as highlights, um, so you can go ahead and talk about the things that you think could have been better. Um, I already kind of br- uh, briefly touched on the predictability. Um, and, and that's I, I think that's the biggest thing. And there are some downtimes in the movie that could probably do with a little bit of better pacing. Um, but the predictability kind of like the, the name thing. And they kind of hold that over like, Oh, I'll tell you that story later. It's like, we already know, like, just say it. What's the big deal? Um, and then with, uh, Lupin being in the Hitler costume, like that was fairly obvious, uh, when you see it and, um, and then using that little eye thing to float down after the, uh, the whole thing explodes. Like, yeah. Okay. It was, he put that thing in his pocket. Obviously it's going to come in into play at some point and it's the end of the movie. So it's got to come into play right now. So there it was. Um, but I mean, those are nitpicky. Like, I think it's still just a fun movie. Like if you want to spend an hour and a half, there's worse ways to do it. And I think this is definitely worth checking out at least once me personally. I, I technically own it now. So I've watched it twice and I started watching it before we recorded, so I've seen it like two and a half times. So I think it's uh it's at least enjoyable enough that I can sit through it twice and enjoy it and be willing to watch it again. Marcus. Um I think one of the big things that annoyed me was the relationship between Letitia, the archaeologist girl that Lupin quote unquote teams up with and um, her like adoptive father. 
Like I thought that relationship was odd because it's supposed whole, to be odd. No, not odd in a way that was believable. Odd in a way that didn't make sense to me. Um, so you have Letitia. She thinks that she just grew up in this orphanage, but the guy that adopted her was the guy who really killed her real parents because because he hated them because they were like good archaeologists or something like that. And he, and he wanted her, like he knew that she was going to be a good archaeologist because of it. So he kind of wanted to control her and have something over her. Well, but he, like long term, he was trying to get this, uh, this book thing open so that he could unlock the eclipse weapon, super weapon. So right. he, he was playing that long game. Okay, yeah. So he was playing a long game where he he uh, adopted her. Like, he did he even need her for that? Yeah, because she had the key to opening the Okay, book. so she had the key, so he didn't need to keep her alive. But anyway, the reason why I think it was weird is because, like, when you first meet them, their relationship seems like it's, it's fine. Really, he calls himself... Um, her adoptive grandfather because the dude's like way older than her like old enough to be her grandfather but their relationship seems like kind of functional more or less but then like throughout the movie he just starts being like a dick to her and like basically unveiling the plan that like I'm just using you I'm never gonna let you be an archaeologist blah 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 and she doesn't seem crushed enough she doesn't seem just <laughs> like that would be fucked up. Like yeah. Yeah. if my dad raised me and like all of us, <laughs> like everything's kind of fine. Maybe we don't have the best relationship, but she was such a sweet girl that you f- kind of feel like they did have a really good relationship. Yeah. She wasn't but, like bitter or anything. Yeah. But, um, I mean, he, we are introduced to her, um, basically taking orders from him and she's doing things that she's like questionable about, but she's not doing anything that's like outright. She's confused. Like this is terrible. This is bad. She's just kind of like, uh, are you sure? So, so it's not like, you know, they have this hateful relationship. So I'm just thinking like if my dad, who I was cool with my whole life. And then by the time, like she's old enough to go to college. Cause that's what she's trying to do. The whole movie is like get admitted into Boston university. I think it is for their, archaeological archaeological program um but uh but like yeah at that age 17 18 whatever she is like the dude just like flips and starts acting like a major dick maybe this is just symptomatic of me not having kids so i don't have to watch kids shit anymore so i'm not used to like reactions in my media not being realistically tough when they need to actually be tough um, but it just, it just seemed like she was just kind of like, no, grandpa, don't do this. Why are you doing this? Instead of going like, wait, like, oh my God, why are you different than you've been my whole life right now? And like, yeah. you're in league with fucking Nazis. Like, wait, what? Instead, <laughs> she's just kind of like, I can't believe you. That's horrible. Like the typical anime bullshit. Yeah, you know yeah. the same sh- same shit that we're that I was complaining about in Akudama Drive, where like this girl is trying to like lecture <laughs> serial killers about it didn't it didn't feel right to me. So that was that was a thing that was kind of odd, and that and then even like how cruel he was being, because it's like you you played the like you were saying AJ he's playing a long game that requires patience, you know that requires like a subtle hand of some sort. But this dude was being fucking like Ronald McDonald evil villain, like like <laughs> Fisher Price, my basic bitch version of a villain. Like this is like the first villain you ever inter- encounter in storytelling when you're in preschool. Well, that's because he and, had he finally had access to what he wanted, so he just went super crazy. He was he holding it in got, for so long. He just, yeah, he finally had to blew let off. It out. You know Not what? That, on. You know what? You're not wrong about that, but it still just it felt off to me. It's just like what? And even if even and let's say he's justified in that. Let's say that that's not weird from him. Her reaction to it still it just wasn't enough for me. So it didn't really break the movie for me because, like I said, I didn't hate the movie, but 
it definitely didn't do anything to draw me into the movie more. It's just yeah, like, okay. it just, it just, I was just watching it happen. It was like, okay. And then the other, the only other thing that I'll bring up is that he, he had uh, the guy that was sort of the leader of the resurgence of the third Reich or whatever they were. Um, that uh, he was like this sort of a classically evil villain too, but he didn't really have any relation to her. So if he treats her like shit, that's not weird to me. But like when you get to the, basically what's the boss fight of the movie is like him and Lupin fighting over like the, the thing that controls the alien uh, weapon of massive destruction that they're trying to, trying to, um, you know, use to take over the world or whatnot. Eclipse. Like, like he, he's in a scene where he's with Letitia and a grandfather dude and they're having their whole little thing and they kind of like make up in this weird way. Um, and then he's like, he sees that his plans aren't going right. So he just like starts kind of fighting everybody. And then he's like fighting Lupin. And I'm like, dude, you're fucking Nazi level evil. You got a weapon of mass destruction. And like, like the whole time, like people are saying things to you and you just kind of like grimace and you're like, you can't do that. And then when you finally do attack them, you kind of like just grab them and throw them. And it's like, you have a gun that we just saw. Like you showed it to fake Hitler. You were like, I have one of the, like the original, he didn't call it a Luger. It looked like a Luger, but it was something else or whatever. And I'm like, if you're that level of evil and like, they're talking about all this shit and they're about to thwart you. And this is what your whole life has been about. Cause he's going, he's flipping his shit. Once he's like, feels his plan slipping through his fingers. It's like immediately you go to the gun. You start shooting people in the face, but he did pull the gun out, but, Lupin had pulled the bullets out, remember? Yeah, you're right about that. You're right about that. But I feel like there were instances before that where I'm like, all right, you're just tossing people and you have this gun. I do remember a lot of tossing happening. And yeah, that's the thing that I'm just like, I have no tolerance for anymore. It's done too much. It it, it happens way (laughs) too often. Like I get it if it's like, uh, like finding Nemo or some shit. Like I understand that you're not. <laughs> the fish not, had guns, but they didn't use them. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, he's, he's gotta be Nazi level evil. And he kind of is. I mean, he throws Letitia out of a plane. I mean, that's pretty Nazi level evil. Um, but right. But at, I'm at just the saying same time, like, there was... he can't be like insanely destructively evil for the sake of the plot. I mean, yeah, but see that that's bad writing then. That's just bad writing. Uh, don't don't, don't give him don't give him a gun and don't don't have all of these long elongated scenes where they're arguing and he's just like grimacing at them like oh don't you dare oh because there was times <laughs> where i thought he was about to like punch a bitch but he just didn't he's just like like just grimacing at him i don't know like maybe i have to watch it again and see you might have to I, watch it again because i th- i just there's plot i just purposes. remember that i just well, no, that's not a good excuse, though. I'm saying the only excuse would be I'm misrepresenting what happened, not that it made sense what happened because of the plot. If your explanation for something happening in the world is like, well, because of the plot, that equals bad writing. You should always, in tight writing, there should always be an explanation within that world to say they did this because of X, Y, Z that has nothing to do with the plot. Um, Like, that's that's... That's just how you make a world believable. But I mean, it, so that's you, where the term plot armor comes from. It's like, why the, did he survive? Because he had to, because he's the antagonist. As opposed to saying, why did this person survive? Well, he's super skilled or he's super smart or the motherfucker that tried to kill him was just too weak or like there was a trap door that the, that the dude fell through. Like those are real expla- explanations within the world. Not, well, the plot requires it. So, but there you, you go. You've got this this triangle relationship of you. You've got the super Nazi guy, you've got the grandfather, and you've got the granddaughter. Um, so, super Nazi guy needs grandfather, who needs granddaughter. Therefore, super Nazi guy needs granddaughter. So he's not going to just start punching her in the face when she doesn't give him what she wants because he needs. At that her. point, he didn't need them. At that point, he didn't need either one of them. No, you're talking about the end of the movie, right? Yeah, well, the end of the movie, the only reason the grandpa needed the girl was to get the key, and the key was to get the fucking treasure, which was the alien ship. 
They have the alien ship. They're on the ship. Right. They're flying the ship. The ship is active. It can destroy anything um, at any time. It and just then he all, shoots. It, he tries to shoot the girl, and then the guy blocks the bullet. Yeah, the Grandpa jumped the in the way. I know that so. that happens eventually, but I, I guess I need that to watch. He didn't, yeah, he could have. He, he could have shot her before then. I'm saying there was a bunch of talking, a bunch of talking <laughs> and grimacing and yelling before that. I'm not saying he didn't originally get to it. It's like when he got to it, when he finally got the kill mode, I was like, all right, here we go. When he pulled the gun out and Lupin is like, like, I took your bullets out. That made sense. I was like, okay, the reason why he has to fist fight Lupin now is because Lupin took his bullets out. Logic dictates that that happened. And then Lupin is going to give him a tough fight because Lupin's wily. He doesn't really know how to fight, but he knows how to evade really well. Like, he knows how to, like, defend himself and be completely um, evasive. I mean, I already said that, but, but so, so it's understandable that he's not, you know, just wrecking Lupin. But when it's like this 17 year old girl and this old ass man who's just like bitter and shit, um, I just remember <laughs> having the impression when they were talking, I'm like, this dude's not mad enough. Like, like, <laughs> he he needs to be madder right now. I'm not feeling. He's not mad scene. enough. She's not sad enough. <laughs> yeah. So 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 that's all. And like I said, it's not. I didn't think it was so bad that I was like, you know, boogie pop levels of mad watching it. <laughs> it was. I was just like. I was just like. Hmm. Okay. This doesn't. This doesn't feel right. You just wanted more way. raw emotion from this movie. That's essentially a teenage. Pixar movie. Hey man, Avatar: The Last Airbender has a bunch of raw emotion in it, and it's for the same audience. Yeah, okay, that's fair. I don't, I, and he, and here's what I'm saying: I'm not saying that everything needs to be dark and gritty. I just need to believe the circumstances that I'm in. Like I can watch, like I can watch, like a happy, fun, like Pixar movie or whatever. Like fucking, um fucking um incredibles like i love that movie not pixar but i love that movie like incredibles is pixar okay incredibles is pixar i think we had this conversation before. we have but it's, uh it's disney it's pixar. but i love i love that movie part of the reason i love that movie is because there's a part where elastigirl is telling her kids like this is not a game these dudes will kill you but the dudes never kill them because they wrote the movie in a way that the kids were never in danger when their parents weren't there so it always made sense that the kids didn't get hurt because they were being protected by their parents. So nothing grisly happened, but you believed because the movie set it up that way that these kids would have got killed if their parents weren't there to save them. You know, like I don't, I don't need it to be like dark and grisly. It's just write it in a way that, you know, if evil Nazi dude is his plans are being thwarted in front of his face and people are like in arm's length of him talking about destroying his plans and he's just grimacing. I'm going to be like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like you need to be like acting more desperate than you actually are because your face okay. is showing it right now, but you're just standing there. Okay. When... Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. I, I agree. Like they, you could probably have written the Nazi guy a little more Nazi ish. Um, but for me, it didn't really detract from the movie. It just and, and and that's kind of I think that's where I mean where the pacing kind of falls apart because towards the end is where the movie weakens as far as you know the 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 fun and the interest. Um, and really, once they hit once they get on that ship, it's like okay, you you see where it's going, and you're like, all right, let's get to the end and and have more fun and then it, it just kind of ends at that point which is okay i mean it's still a fun it's a fun movie but i would say probably the last 15 to 20 minutes are the weakest part of the movie and a part of that is the reason that you're explaining is that the the stakes while they're bad they're not that it doesn't feel feel like there's anything really going to be that impactful i mean they do kind of drop that small um i guess it was a bomb or a small black hole that sucked up some trees so you kind of see what the what it can do um 
but it just it doesn't ever feel like the the stakes are against them and like that's an impossible thing to <laughs> to uh take care of yeah i mean they're out in the desert like when the thing is going off and like right. i think they get over some mountains and trees at some point but the thing goes off twice and i mean it just takes out like nature i mean some birds probably got smoked but like yep. it wasn't like we're headed to to paris right now and you know we're fighting against the clock which might have added a little more interest i'm not saying it needed to do that but that's yeah. just yeah. an that's just an example of how you can add a little bit more stakes to the movie rather than it just being like, I mean, I'm, they're out in the middle of nowhere and Lupin took the bullets out of the gun. Grandpa dude, like he's out of commission and y- you know that Goemon and Fujiko and, um, and uh, Jigen are going to show up and do some cavalry shit at some point in time, you know, but, but all, all this to say like, I think that this movie just isn't for me and that's fine. Um, I'm not, I like, I like stuff with teeth more or I like things that if they're going to be like happy and funny, they just have to be really funny. And I'm, I mean, I wasn't busting a gut at this movie or anything like that, but yeah, I mean, it was nice to look at and the music was great. So that's a win. <laughs> that is a win. Uh, Alan, yeah. you want to add anything else? Yeah, um, I'll I'll just kind of add on to what Marcus said about like I guess I wasn't really invested in the movie where to to the point where I was disappointed when those those beats that you mentioned kind of weren't felt like, like they felt a little weak. Like I know I, the tone of the movie is kind of like a fun romp, uh, you know, like an Indiana Jones style thing, and they uh, they don't want to go too into the weeds with like their emotional states and and like you know super evil shit um and also for the same purpose of the plot like they you know they did some things where like they're on the they're unlocking the the weapon and then all of a sudden the bad guys showed up like yeah we followed you and it's just like y'all didn't think of that like (laughs) they were gonna (laughs) they're gonna let you handle all the traps and the riddles and then just sneak up on you like nobody nobody thought to like guard the door or whatever i think even uh what's his name goemon did guard the door but then ah uh, he said something they were like how do, how do they get past you and he was just like oh i let my guard down or it was something like you know some he didn't have his sword no. because he had to use it to make that bridge thing or something yeah yeah Which something was, like kind of odd anyway I, you know well it's I because did... his sword was made from meteor right or... I, it just the and coincidences that was were the... just kind of like silly at that i mean that's just yeah it's the typical like indiana jones last uh last jedi shit where it's like you gotta have this thing to unlock that thing and it just so happens that this person has it yeah and they they, the 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 thing where like their grandfathers worked together or something her real grandfather and his grandfather and it was like you know all those those little feel-good things that they that they include in there I don't um, really know why so, it was called the first. Because I think I, his grandfather's Lupin the first. Oh, that makes sense. So that was just a little... <laughs> for the reason on, I was just dude. talking about. Come but on, he, dude. You're the one that loves this movie so much. But he's not like a, a key part of the movie. I no, mean, he's not even a character. Like no. Three times, maybe. And he, you don't even see him. So, yeah, it's not like he's that big into the plot. I guess that's the thing too, right? There's no big thing that the movie like you leave with. At least for me, there wasn't. Yeah, I, I they try. They try. They try to say, "Oh, Lutitia was what unlocked the the thing, the book." Okay, we all knew that when you did the code, but they, they try to make it. And in that was early moment. in the. Yeah, that was early in the movie too. Well, no, I feel like there's like the thing at the end that like is the the note of satisfaction, right? So. I, maybe that point was supposed to be that, oh, Lupin and Letitia were made to work together because their grandparents worked together. But it's like, it I just guess. feels kind of weak because they don't really spend a whole lot of time talking about Lupin's grandfather. They, they, like, they, talk, yeah. they talk about her real father a lot, right. but they don't talk about his grandfather at all until that one scene where he's just like, Grandad, oh, it's your hat. I'm going to put it on. 
and pose. Like, oh yeah, I, yeah. Like here's my grandfather's cane and hat randomly in some alien artifact vessel. Because he's been here. He found it. He yeah, just didn't have the key. He, he saw it first. So yeah, just stuff like that where like, you know, you're watching the movie and you're like, okay, it's obvious they wanted to have plain scene and big, you know, this and that and how do we how do we stitch a plot together that allows us to do all those things. Um but yeah, I wasn't like, you know, I didn't have these high expectations where I was like, oh that's disappointing. I was just like, oh, okay, fine, that's the 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 justification for for all these all these setups. And, you know, it was still a still a really good time. Despite the shortcomings. You could there are worse way worse things you can do with uh with the time. Yeah. Not a perfect movie, but definitely worth watching. Yeah, it didn't didn't need to be perfect for me i was just like oh this is gonna be a new thing and like again that just to see the animation and like just the i think i already said this but like just how like expressive the faces are is really really amazing to watch the uh letitia like like we've talked about the ff7 characters how they like glow and like sparkle almost they look almost like ethereal Mm -hmm. or angelic kind of Letitia kind of looks like that. I felt like, yeah, like they kind of they have this dull like luster to them. They kind of shine a little bit, or they look kind of like sparkly. Yeah, I think the real thing that I noticed <coughs> um, that made me think Pixar um, were the eyes, and her yeah. eyes specifically looked very um, Disney or Pixar heroine. She me, looked like, like a Disney heroine. princess. Like she could easily, yeah. like could she copy made me paste th- her and put her in a Disney movie. Yeah, she yeah, made sure. me think of Elsa. Like yeah, she looked like Anna from from Frozen. Yeah. yeah, she was. Yeah, I really liked her her character model. I thought she was cute, um, good to look at. I thought the way that they translated, like you said, AJ, the way they translated like Lupin and Fujiko and the rest, like that looked really good too. Especially when you think about how distinct the style of Lupin is in the like original mm-hmm. the, a way to successfully translate that to 3d animation I would think would be kind of hard maybe it's not but it would seem like it would be hard to me so I felt like they did that good right there was a lot of detail in um the rendering so so yeah they definitely get points for that I would not mind watching other stuff done in the same style yeah yeah, I feel like I would watch anything that looked as good as this movie. I feel like just they've to, set just the to bar see it for, once. for 3D translation of anime into 3D. Not to say that all anime in 3D is bad. I mean, you still got things like Dora Hidora, which look really good. Um, Blame is okay. Blame's all right. Alter Carbon looks good. Alter Carbon oh, looks yeah. good. Um, but looking at this it's this is the best this is better this than is all that by far the best so I, i'm not saying every 3d anime has to live up to this quality because that's definitely not going to happen but uh if you want to top this you're going to have well, to those are like really even hard. all the ones you guys mentioned that's like 3d animation trying to look like hand-drawn animation but this this was not that this was like fully rendered like they look like action yeah. figures more than they look like drawings or cartoons like right. they, they didn't plastic. look creamy either There's they no did not look creamy <laughs> very that was a key no. distinction with these characters there was no creaminess whatsoever no. uh there was like some dust and some roughness and some a little bit some of grit Fujiko. like marcus mentioned but and then there's fujiko um they just need to make a fujiko movie in that style and I'll watch it. Yeah, there were times over I was just like, I want to watch this part in slow motion, or I want to like <laughs> just pause like on this person's face and just like take it in for a second. Yep, it's good. Not, I mean, not just not just the you know the the female characters either. Like the dude, the old man, like her fake grandfather, when he was like raging out at one point, he's like going and like his teeth, like you see his teeth and his facial hair and everything's like. There's a couple really close shots. Like you can see the individual hairs on his face, and I was just like, "Damn, yeah!" Like Jigen's model looks, looks really, really good, good. I like seeing Jigen and 
3D and like they didn't screw that up at all. Like that was exactly how Jigen should be based on what I've seen of, of Lupin. So it was good. All right. Who's uh, a K- Kaza Kaza? Who's the, the detective guy or, that's always Zenigawa? Oh, Zenigawa. I got to talk about him for a second because his, his expressions were great. Yeah. Like he, he just, he probably like... felt like the most direct lift. He looked almost exactly like he looks in the 2D cartoons. Too. Yeah. 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 And the animations on him and the way that he, like how expressive he was, he was probably the most expressive character. And like they yeah. just nailed him like right on. It, his face was... distorted the most. So, like, you know, his eyes bug or like, not like, you know, dramatic cartoon bugging out, but just like his eyes go wide and his jaw like, you know, juts out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they even got his run right. The way that like him and his minions run. Um, they're like always, they're always at angles. They always have their arms like up and like they take steps that are too big and they bounce a lot. Like they, <laughs> they just recreated that pretty well. They did. They did a good job with that. It was awesome. So what else? It's getting a little late. Final thoughts. Anything uh, you want to add to anything you haven't said yet? Watch uh, it. They need to make a Fujiko Mine one where her tits stay in so AJ <laughs> can watch it with his kids and be a freak on the inside, but not on the outside. They just need to make another Lupin movie like Lupin the, thir- the first, but have Fujiko in it more. Then I can get what I want <laughs> and I can watch it with my kids. <laughs> and, and he's gonna make his wife she doesn't have to be naked in fact she can stay clothed the entire no time. he needs her to stay close so he can watch it with his kids so he doesn't feel bad <laughs> he needs the feels without the without the bad feels yeah right. he wants to feel it without because he can think guilt. whatever he wants but if he's guilt watching free. it with his kids he's not a creep if he's like if it's like 12 30 at night and everybody's sleep well, it's his house. If it's like two thirty in the morning and everybody's sleep, and he's watching <laughs> it by himself, then he'll just feel creepy. So he just needs a family friendly version. Yeah, I, he doesn't want a full. He you, doesn't want a full creep. You own the movie, to, just like bookmark or you know link all the all the timestamps. <laughs> I have an active imagination, so I don't. I don't need. <laughs> You can leave right. a, a anyway. lot to the imagination. <laughs> <laughs> so I think anybody who likes animation and appreciates high levels of detail and very well styled, uh, well executed, like style and tone and kind of like that fun kind of uh, like adventure romp film if you're into any of that i think you should watch this movie you won't be disappointed uh yeah it's gorgeous and the music like marcus said is banging good good stuff for your ear holes any other words marcus nope watch it if you want <laughs> it's fine <laughs> i'm never you might watch like it again you might not. say what would you say AJ? i just said i'm never gonna watch it again I'm probably not. I'm. You know what? I might watch the airplane scene. Oh well, fuck! I can't. AJ owns it. If I can get a chance somehow, I might watch the airplane scene again just to see how much I'm hyping. Because you can misremember things. I just remember the feeling that I had when I was watching it. That you know everything I said was true. That's all. The but anyway, I don't do have a, a watch online. We'll throw it up for a minute and rewatch that scene before we watch whatever we watch next. That works. I like that idea. All right. Well, with that, I'm gonna wrap it up. Do it. I got. I got. Hold on. I got one more thing. I was okay. on brokotaku.com the other day. Oh shit! I What'd was looking. Get? I was. I didn't get anything because I was looking for just just getting some pricing. You know, just just doing a little window shopping on uh, some Demon Slayer boot Blu-rays, and I c- couldn't. I found it eventually. But I realized that you got all the all the figurines. You got all the figurines on brokotaku.com. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll many figurines, I could barely find the movie. <laughs> so, are you suggesting I should add some better search functionality? No, I was just saying. I just wanted everyone to know that you got. It's not just the movies or you get these figures, the mangas. Man. You get yeah. You can get your uh, 
the little get your collection going your display yeah, you case figmas you can uh yeah you can feed that hunger on brokotaku.com so on that note visit brokotaku.com visit us on twitter at brokotaku or at brokotaku cast where we tweet about the podcast one year actually february 6th or something was the the first episode was published so we are coming up on exactly one year since the, our first episode went live. Uh, Clap for so us. Send that's us exciting. money big, in little envelopes. Big pat on the back. We're yeah. awesome. We're great. Tell us, tell us how cool we are. So many thousands and thousands of listeners <laughs> listen to the Broco Talk podcast <laughs> every day. <laughs> every single day. <laughs> You can be one of them. Continue yes. to be one of them. Please. Join Thank the you. legions. <laughs> Join the legions. legions of fans. <laughs> A legion of fans. One fan, many listens. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the legions of listen. Listens. Oh, um, man. Uh, on YouTube, I put the episodes up on YouTube. We're on iTunes. Leave a five-star review if you like it. Uh, Spotify, Google Podcasts bunch of other stuff check us out on there leave the We're reviews all over that give shit. us the thumbs up leave us the comments send us your hate mail and uh we'll appreciate it anything else i'll appreciate it no, nah, I think that's boo. it. good night folks we love you bye bye thanks for listening bye bye oh, i gotta be so bad Gone. Gone. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. What, 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 well, uh.